Let's look ahead to Thursday. There are four games on in the NBA, injury updates, who we're streaming in, all of that stuff. You know, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and if they've got footage of Wilt Chamberlain trying to fight Bill Russell, why is there no footage of him scoring 100 points? Adam Silver's NBA strikes again. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball, on TikTok at redrock underscore b-ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks, the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. Thumbs up. Comments done. Bells rung. Trade deadline show pre banged. Let's hit 1500. Go find it Thursday, February the 8th, 1 p.m. It's pinned at the top of the YouTube page. It's linked in the description of all these shows. It's flying around up here somewhere. Go and hit it and get ready for what I hope is going to be a fun, fun show. Let's talk about Thursday. There are four games on in the NBA. Although what I will do right now is just give you a bit of an update on some injury news that dropped for Wednesday just right now. Ben Simmons is out. One game. This is a different issue. It's his knee. He, we saw him land towards the end of that game and hurt his knee, and he, then he was probable, and then he was questionable, and now he is out. Again, you can hate the bloke as much as you want. It's, that's, it, it's, it's sad, right? It's, it is. It's sad. And who knows what this means or where it goes uh, from here. It's really disappointing. Um, yeah. But that's for Wednesday. Let's talk Thursday. There are four games on. We don't have a ton of clarity on a lot of the injuries at this point, which is annoying. So I've tried to leave this as long as I can to record it, but we just don't have the clarity. Uh, Derek Rose is going to be out. They think he might be back in a few games. And that will, again, further muddy all of the Gilead and Williams and Conchar and Pippen. And this team is going to be disgusting all the way through. It is going to be... And now I've got footage of Desmond Bain practicing from a fake grade three ankle sprain. And I say fake, not to disparage Bain at all. I just don't think the Grizzlies reported it correctly. I don't think he had a grade three ankle sprain, which is, of course, a complete tear of your ankle ligament. You're not back in two and a half weeks practicing from a complete tear of your ankle ligament. That is a lie. It is a, a very much a lie. And that's annoying. And this team is annoying. They were the original Charlotte Hornets in terms of injury reporting. They did this with Mike Conley for his Achilles issue back in like I don't know, six years ago, seven years ago. And they just kept listing him like questionable out when he had like a torn, partially torn Achilles. And they did it with Jaron Jackson and his knee injury like two years ago, whatever it was, and said that he'd be like available start of December and he came back in February or whatever it was. They had the original terrible injury reporting team. Keep an eye on that. Um, I'm just going to... D'Anthony Melton's going to be out. Maybe he's back next week. We don't know. He will be... In, look, we're getting close to that stage where we can sort of look to stash Melton. You could have dropped him a few weeks ago very easily. Uh, now we're getting to that stage. It's always going to depend on how your IR slots sit or your IL slots or however you want to phrase it, how, whether they're open or not. But Melton's in a spot here where I think Embiid's going to be out long-term. I don't know though. And then Melton gets a little bit of a boost when he eventually returns. As for Embiid, I'm just I'm going to rule him out. I don't think he's playing on Thursday. I don't think he's playing on Saturday. Uh, but I, I don't know. We, we just don't know how long he is going to be out, what he's going to be out. But again, even if he didn't have that issue with Kaminga falling on his knee towards the end, hyperextending it, the bloke couldn't jump. Like he was going to sit some of these games anyway. So this has to miss time here. Evan Mobley, I'm listing doubtful. Why you ask? Well, he's playing Wednesday and it's a back-to-back. So I would imagine third game back from a knee surgery, you probably don't go on the back-to-back. So I'm going to put him doubtful. We'll get more information. Ben Matherin, TJ McConnell, they both missed the last game for the Pacers. So I'm going to put them questionable here. We go to the Knicks and the Jedi, OG Ananobi. He's dealing with a scarf-induced elbow problem. He missed the last two. I don't know whether he's returning. Luke Cornett is officially questionable. 
For the Celtics, um, Horford returns. Porzingis is there. I don't think Cornette plays is dealing with a hamstring problem. I doubt he's out there. Uh, he's just... That's not going to matter, though, because yeah, Porzingis and Horford are both there. Anthony Davis missed the last game for the Lakers. He is questionable on the injury report. LeBron, you'll be shocked to know, is questionable as well. Every single game. And... I wouldn't have so much of a problem with LeBron being... The Sixers should do that for Embiid as well, honestly, because the way the man is, he should be questionable every game. But the LeBron stuff is just so weird because he plays like 96% of them. At least improbable at least every time. Um, Jarrett Allen is questionable for Wednesday's game with an illness, so I don't know that he plays Wednesday, so I don't know that he plays Thursday. The Duck, Luke Kennard, is officially questionable for the Grizzlies. He's missed the last like three with that um, uh, knee soreness. Last well, three or two. Uh, he's questionable. John Conchar is uh, missed the last game. I expect that Conchar is able to return. Don't really think there was much in that ankle sprain that they claimed. And I'm pretty sure that the bug Vince Williams will play. He was out with arm soreness or something like that. And Zaire Williams was que- is missed the last game too. I've got him questionable. I think both Vince and Zaire play. The big question is going to be Tyrese Maxey, who's missed, what, three straight now with an ankle sprain. Um, his absence along with Embiid opens up tons for the Sixers. I just don't know that he's going to play and I don't imagine we find out until tomorrow. Marcus Morris also is an, is an impact guy because they um, have the absence of Robert Covington. There's the absence of Embiid. Morris can play center. And if Morris is out, then it's all Reed and Bumba playing center. There's nobody else really there. I've got Tyrese Halliburton listed probable because he's going to play, but that is the first game of a back-to-back for Halliburton and the Pacers, Thursday, Friday. He claims he's going to play on the back-to-back, but what does he top out at? 45 combined minutes across the two? That would be my guess. So I'm guessing, I expect that he plays. And Nick Batum missed the last game with a hamstring issue. That was a, uh, a back-to-back for the Sixers. I'd expect they sat him because it was the back-to-back, so I think that he'll be available. So I have preemptively listed Batum as probable for their game on Thursday against the Utah Jazz. Today's episode is brought to you by PrizePix. PrizePix is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's also the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including the pros and the sharks who spend all their time, good for them, putting up their lineups and setting up their algorithms, PrizePix is you versus one thing, projections. They put up individual player stats, whether that is points or rebounds or steals or whatever it is, and they just choose more. You choose more or less. You do between two to six of those individual numbers, put them into an entry, and you win up to 25 times your money back. You can play against some of PrizePix's favorite players as well, like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schiltz. You can now find the community plays under the promos tab over on PrizePix, and you can view entries from some of the biggest names in the PrizePix community each week. So go to pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNBA. Use the code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. PricePix is daily fantasy sports made easy. Okay, so we've given the injury updates. Again, stuff is going to change in the next 24 hours. We know that. That's how the NBA works. Back-to-backs Thursday into Friday. It's two teams. It's the Pacers and the Grizzlies. And seeing the Grizzlies on a back-to-back list is... You should be shuddering because... Who knows? Aldama, Tillman, Jackson, Kennard, Williams, Williams, Roddy. Like, who's going to play? Is Trey Jemison going to be out there? Matthew Hurt going to be playing? Tosan Ebwaman, is he going to be playing? Because they signed him from the Pistons G League team. We could have just unbelievably disgusting and unpredictable lineups. Be worried. The Pacers should be all right. But the problem with the Pacers, of course, is that Rick Carlisle can chuck 13 different guys out there at any point and adjust their roles as he sees fit, which is his right as a coach, and it's our frustration as fantasy managers. In terms of streams of the day, it's got to be Paul Reed. Like It just has to be. He is the 10-team stream of the day. Unless Embiid somehow makes a recovery and plays, again, he won't, but I, I can't tell you 100% on that, so I'll give you a 99.9 on Embiid playing tomorrow. And if he's wrong, come flood the comments. If, or if I'm wrong, flood him. If he plays, flood him. Drop it in the comments everywhere. You're an idiot, Josh. How dare you rule out the GOAT Joel Embiid? Put it there. He's out, 99.9%. Um, so reads the stream. 12-team, it is Jared Vanderbilt Bar. His value would rise if Anthony Davis is out, but he's still a strong stream anyway. 14-team, it would have been like a Nick Batum. I'm not 100% sure he plays. I'm just going to go with Chris Dunn, who just gives enough. There are nights when he can elevate and play 23 or 24, but most nights it's 18 minutes, it's six points, four rebounds, four or five assists, two steals, a block. That's enough in a 14-teamer. And then in 16, I'm going with Mo Bamba because I expect, that like he could get to 25 minutes. Minimum will be 17 minutes, I'm guessing. 
10 and 4, 3 blocks is an upside possibility for Bumba. Actually, an upside would be 14, 8, 3 blocks in 24 minutes, which is really good. And he's available. So 16 teamers, we do look to Bumba here. I don't think that Bumba's going to start over Paul Reed. He has significant deficiencies. But in a deeper league, this is a guy that can produce very easily in limited minutes. So we want to look there. Yahoo points and ESPN points. Again, I'm just going with Paul Reed, And my projections on Paul Reed are actually pretty like um, conservative. I don't have him playing 33 minutes a night. It's like 24 or 25. But he is a good permanent producer. And we've seen that. He averages like, what is it, 1.4 steals and 1.3 blocks in 25 minutes as a starter. And 12 points or 11 points and 7 rebounds or something. like It's enough right, for us to get excited about it. Let's talk about what's on my radar. The first game is the Pacers and the Knicks. Um, it's Halliburton to me. Not that I need clarification whether he's good or not. It's what minutes does he play? How long is he on a 20, 21 minute limit? I, I don't know. Will they drop that even further because it's a back to back? Would they play? Or could they play him twelve minutes Thursday, twelve minutes Friday? He had thirty one usage last game because his minutes were limited, and he got a huge assist. Is that? realistic that Halliburton becomes a super high usage player in those minutes? I don't think so, but I want to see. For the Knicks, I do want to see what they do with the big sneeze, Precious Achua. Because if OG plays, how does Precious get used? Does he play the 18 minutes behind Hartenstein? Does he play 18 minutes behind Hartenstein and then 12 minutes behind Ananobi at Power Forward? That's 30 minutes. That's useful. Or does the fact that if Ananobi is there and they can play Ananobi, Hart, Grimes, DiVincenzo across the two, three, and four, does that mean that Precious is exclusively a center? I honestly don't know. If I hear that OG is out, then Precious goes way up the board because he's going to have to play a ton. In terms of streams, Nembhard is probably the stream for the Pacers, although if Matherin and McConnell all play, then his value does decline. And then we get into that, what do they do with Matherin? What do they do with Heald? What do they do with Nembhard combination where the minutes are... Okay, could be decided on a whim. And by whim, I don't mean that to be like a negative thing. It's more like, hey, you've got it, you haven't. Carlisle's got many options there. It's a very similar situation with all those wings with the paces, with the way the Pelicans can run things with Jones, with Namiel Legend, Jordan Hawkins, with Trey Murphy, with even Najee Marshall. They've just got many different guys that they can slot in depending on the situation in the game or the way those guys are playing, which from a fantasy point of view is obviously a nightmare. Uh, Achua is the stream for the Knicks. That's under the assumption that DiVincenzo's rostered, he's 64%, absolute must-add everywhere. Uh, Josh Hart is rostered, he's 60% rostered, must-add everywhere. And then Precious is the next one, and then Grimes is the next one after that. Um, but yeah, Precious's value does rise if we do get that situation where uh, OG Ananobi is sidelined. The next game, the battle for the ages, the battle of the banners, the Lakers, the Celtics. Austin Reeves, who watched my show, the Buy Low show, and I said, Austin, let's do something, mate. Let's pick it up. And he went out and he went crazy. He had a huge game. Is that exclusively because Anthony Davis was out? Possible. Is it because D'Angelo Russell had a stinker? Possible. Is it independent of those two things? Less likely, but that's what we want to see, isn't it? A lot of what Reeves had been doing, as I detailed on that by Low Sell High show, was some stuff that I expected to improve. And then it improved and went way above expectation. So let's see where it holds here. For the Celtics, Porzingis took a ton of shots last game. How they're utilizing him in terms of minutes, is they going to hold him at 30? as they worry about his calf, his ankle, uh, his knee soreness, which isn't that much of an issue. It's more of his ankle that he keeps spraining, uh, how they utilize him. For the streams, Vanderbilt's the very clear one there for the Lakers, I believe. And then Pritchard, maybe for the Celtics, but we're talking deep stuff there with Pritchard. Horford for the shallow streams, obviously. But Pritchard, Hauser, these are just your deep league stream options there for your Boston Celtics. Cleveland and Memphis, just a game where I, 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 I hate it. And I'll tell you why I hate it, because Cleveland is coming off a back-to-back. -back, so... Darius Garland, we expect to play on Wednesday, but will he play the back-to-back -back on Thursday? I don't know. I would think that there is some conditioning issues with him, obviously. Having your jaw wide shut for four weeks would lead to that, and that's why he's been delayed in returning. Does Evan Mobley play? I would doubt that he plays. But then on the Memphis side, it's the first of a back-to-back -back for them. So Kennard, Concha, Williams, Williams, Jaron, Santi, Xavier, Hurt, everyone. Everyone's on the on the slate here to be in, to be out, and I don't know, and that is a disaster. Probably for the Cavs, we can stream in Dean Wade because I am working under the assumption that Mobley is out, but if Mobley and Garland are out, Sam Merrill might get that bump there too. For the Grizzlies, Kennard is the obvious stream. I just don't know that he's going to play. He will, I guess, start, play 30 minutes, have like 14 points, four threes. 
three rebounds, six assists. It's really good. I just, I just don't know. I don't know if he's going to be out there. So I put him as a stream sort of option, but you know, we just need more of that information, obviously. Today's episode is also brought to you by Fangel. Happy Super Bowl to those of you who celebrate it from Fangel, America's number one sportsbook. Super Bowl Sunday is coming up, and you know what it's about. If you're not at the game, you're watching the game. You're finding yourself that best seat on the couch. You're organizing your snacks. You're getting someone, you're making them. Someone's making them. You're getting it catered. You're going out, whatever it is. Getting the food, the positioning, and getting your super bets sorted for Super Bowl Sunday. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. But my question to you is, who do you think is getting the W? Is it the Chiefs? Is it the Niners? And if it is either of those teams, is anyone outside of the quarterback going to win Super Bowl MVP? I guess probably not. But these are the things that we can look at on FanDuel. Who's going to win? What are the points scored in the game? Who's going to score a touchdown? Super Bowl MVP? It's all there. So go ahead and look at FanDuel if you're a new customer. You can get $200. In bonus bets, if you place a first bet of $5 or more, and it wins. So get those $200 in bonus bets. Get your $5 bet in. Go to fanjul.com slash locked on to sign up. That is fanjul.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with Fanjul, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. Okay. We've looked at the Cavs-Memphis game. Let's look at the Philadelphia and the Utah game. A lot of uncertainty, obviously. We're expecting Embiid to be out. But Marcus Morris is a question mark, and Tyrese Maxey is a question mark. Kelly Oubre, I would say, has not stepped up enough in this role with a lot of guys out. Yes, we roll with him at this point because the minutes are there and the usage is elevated. But like he hasn't done enough to be blowing up completely. I don't think that when this team is healthy, he will start, but... They might be a long way from being healthy. Also want to watch Jordy Clarkson because it's been a couple of bad games in the row from, for Clarko. The man on the street is red hot at times and then ice cold. I believe that we hold him, but you always are going to understand that there's going to be a lack of defensive stats and field goal percentage issues and a lot of fluctuation in scoring. In terms of streams, it's obviously Paul Reed for Philadelphia. I think Chris Dunn or Kelly Linick uh, have some real value there on the Jazz side. If obviously John Collins is available, we probably prioritize him. Uh, over those players, and I look at yeah, Dunn over a um, uh, over a Keontae George in that scenario as well. If you look at chunks Thursday through Monday, the only day that is a high volume day across those five days is Friday with ten games on. You've got nine on the Sunday, but I believe that's still streamable. We can do Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday has I think six games on. So we've got streaming ability. So again, we're just talking Paul Reed Thursday, Saturday, Monday, great value. Jared Vanderbilt Bar Thursday, Saturday, Monday. Nico Batum. I'm expecting that he plays and there's no back-to-backs here, so that's three high-quality games. Thursday, Saturday, Monday. Drakaris Levert, Thursday, Saturday, Monday as well for the Cavs, who's been struggling, obviously, but that little three-game quality game boost is useful. Aaron Neesmith and the Pacers only have two, but he's performing at a high enough level that he's got use there for Thursday, Sunday with those two quality games. You'd probably start him on the games that aren't quality anyway, so on Friday, you'd start him regardless. And then Ubre's on there as well as a Sixers player. Thursday, Saturday, Monday. You could throw Pat Beverly into that list if we do hear that Tyrese Maxey is indeed out. If you're just looking at uh, Thursday, the 10-team stream guys, we're going to start and end. We're not going to end. We're going to start with Paul Reed. Go to Aaron Neesmith there. There is the Duck Luke Canard if he's available. Al Horford's on that list. Johnny Conchar is on that list if he plays. Uh, and Jared Vanderbilt's on there. Of course, that could all be turned upside down depending on the status of a lot of those Grizzlies guys. For 12 teamers, we are looking at Batum. I'm under the assumption he's going to play. Santi Aldama, what, is he going to play? I don't know. He's there. You could throw Tillman into that mix as well, but do they start him or not? I don't know. Andrew Nempard, TJ McConnell, if he's available. Uh, Kelly Linux in there. And Chris Dunn. Preston Chua would jump into this list if we knew that OG was out. Otherwise, he sort of falls just a little bit behind a Chris Dunn there. Because, But it depends. Like If you're just looking for bulk points with some rebounds, Chua can do that. Um, if you're looking for some well-roundedness and some of the you know, assists and steals and blocks and threes and good percentages, well, Precious doesn't deliver that. In terms of deep streamers, we are looking at Mo Bamba. Uh, Quentin Grimes, I think, is worth, uh, worth having a crack at there. Fontecchio, Dean Wade, Jalen Smith is a really good deep league stream. And then George Niang. Work, the Wade and Yang ones are we're working under the assumption that uh, Mobley is going to sit with the possibility that Darius Garland is going to be out there as well. For your points league streams, we are going back to, guess what, Paul Reed. Uh, we've got Luke Canard there if he's available. Aldama, uh, Vanderbilt, Concha, 
and Andrew Nempard. I'm a little less certain on Nempard because a few things can obviously switch that up. And one of those things is Richard Carlisle and his uh, rotations. And that brings us to the end of a very fast daily look ahead. I said Wednesday there. That is, we're definitely not looking at the Wednesday. We're looking ahead to Thursday. So apologies for that date. It is Thursday, the 2nd of February that we are looking ahead to. My mistake. Guys, go ahead and give this one a like, a thumbs up, a subscription, and ring the bell. Leave your comments down below also, and find the Trade Deadline Show. Pray like it. Guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.